Are you an audiophile? Do you believe that sound makes the system? Do you love home theater? Do you try to build the best home theater you can? If so, and you're in your car, stop. If you're in the office, get off the WebEx. If you're at home, take the kids out of the room because for the next 10 minutes you need to focus because we're going to talk about something that will change your world. This is something fundamental to sound, to theater, to your experience when you're enjoying a movie. So hit the subscribe button because this is part one of two parts. Yes, in the multiverse there might be parts three, four, and five, but in this universe, in this multiverse, there is a part one and a part two and you are about to experience part one. And if you don't want to miss part two, make sure to subscribe because it's going to blow your mind in ways that part one will try to. We'll almost get there with, but the only way for you to get the experience is to subscribe and watch both parts because today we're going to be talking about sound. We're going to be talking about bass and we're going to be talking about that subwoofer right there. Welcome back fanatics. Thanks so much for hitting that subscribe button because I know you did it. Uh, and you know, as I said, today's all about the bass and we're gonna be looking at the M&K Sound X12 Plus. It's THX certified and it's one of their new subwoofers that they've dropped over the last six months. So they've released a lot of models, but the X series, the X Plus series is really interesting because it's a dual driver setup. And this comes in uh, the 10 inch version, a 12 inch version, which this one is, and then a big whopping 15 inch version, which I can't wait to get my hands on and check out, uh, but that'll be more toward the end of the year. Now, uh, the THX certification we've dug into already, if you didn't see that video because you weren't subscribed and you didn't get notified, uh, there's a link up here that you can check out. And that's a really deep dive with MK Sound and THX and they talk about what that specification means and the different kinds of THX certification and what that would mean for you in your room. So go and check that out. Today though, in part one of two, we want to look at the beginning steps of ownership for this kind of subwoofer. So you can kind of apply the experience to what it might be like in your room. And that's going to break down into two pieces. One, that's looking at the subwoofer, what is it like to get it, and we'll take it out of the box and I'll show you what that looks like. We're going to set it up and we're going to look at all of the specifications. So you'll understand what kind of drivers it has, uh, power for the amplification, capabilities, and that kind of thing. And once it's set up, that's going to directly lead into part two of the video. And that's going to be where I really review the unit, tell you what I think about it, as well as show you measurements. I'm going to show you the unit in action. And I'm going to watch a few movies with it and really give you that deep understanding of what it could do for you. Now, make sure you'll want to be subscribed for that so that you know when it's coming so you'll be notified because the information from part one and part two combined with the information from the interview that I did with THX at MK Sound will give you that full view of what this can do for you. I think as a first step, I've put together a very cinematic, very fast unboxing of this. So you can see what it would be like if you had one of these shipped to your home and you opened it up yourself. So let's go ahead, jump in, take a look at that. And then on the flip side, we'll get into the specifications and we'll walk through what this thing looks like on the front and back and the bottom, because the bottom's kind of cool, of this unit. Here we are looking at the front of the subwoofer. As you can see, there's one big old 12 inch driver pointing at us. 
And then if you look at the bottom, peeking right down there, there's another one that is pointed up into the box and you can see the magnet. Obviously, these are ferrite magnet 12s. Uh, there's no Neo there. Uh, but that technology of having these two subs together really is a big part of the magic for this unit. Now, um, we talked about this in the interview, and I'm going to cut to that now so you can hear just a brief snippet of you know, what the push-pull technology brings to this scenario. And it's really important to understand that because that's part of the magic of the system. Without the dual sub push-pull technology, this becomes more of a pedestrian kind of subwoofer, right? It's kind of the stuff that you see all the time. But in this configuration, it's really, really special. So let's go ahead and cut to that and, uh, and listen to what they have to say about the the, the cool non-isobaric push-pull configuration. Now, are these playing in uh, in phase or out of phase? So, you know, as this one in the front pushes out, does the one in the bottom mm -hmm. push out mm -hmm. so that they're like this? Are they kind of pushing against each other? How how does that work and what value does that, you know, bring? Great, yeah. You know? So they, they are out of phase. So they play opposite each other. And, and the key thing is obviously you want bass, um, but bass is a lot of things. Uh, now we want we want a tight bass, you know. Mm -hmm. It's good you that it starts it quickly, but it has to stop quickly as well. That's that's a key thing. We don't, which is also one of the reasons for, for, for sealing up our cabinets. We don't want, as I said, you can get a lot of bass, but we don't want, a, a lot is not necessarily what we're looking for. We're looking for precise bass. Uh, having two um, two drivers working this way means that we uh, minimize distortion because they work opposite of each other. The two drivers work opposite mm -hmm. and any distortion that they do generate will be eliminated in the cabinet. So 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 that's one of our key things is is that we want to make sure that it gets as little distortion as possible. Uh, we also want to make them as compact as we possibly can and still get get our THX certification <laughs> right. we meet their requirements. Uh, and you could say, well, what's the what's the idea of going down to 18 hertz or 16 hertz or whatever because you can't hear it anyways. But the fact that it's there and you know that it's precise all the way down there, that's a key thing for us, that, that we know it, it will deliver what it should deliver and it should be precise. As I said, one of the key things is, is it's great that it starts quickly and precisely, but it has to stop as well. A few other things to talk about before we get to the rear, uh, and that's where all the amplification is, is that the, the unit has a frequency response of 18 to 200 hertz, and that's the in-room average, average response plus or minus three decibels. It also lists uh, the frequency roll-off with THX EQ at 18 hertz, and that's a minus six decibels at 20 hertz near field. And then the frequency roll-off, the anechoic EQ, is also 18 hertz minus six decibels, 20 hertz near field. Um, now, what does that mean? Uh, I think it means it plays really low. <laughs> Right, 20 is kind of the cutoff before you get to the subsonics, and in all scenarios, this thing is definitely dipping dipping underneath that. So I don't think you're gonna have any concerns around the subterranean depths that the subwoofer can dig to. Now, uh, let's flip this to the back, and as we flip to the back, I'm gonna throw up some footage so you can see what the subwoofer looks like on the bottom, and this is what the rear of this one looks like, which is pretty cool. So let's check that out, and then we'll get to the back where the amplification is. Welcome to the rear of the subwoofer, and this is where all of our amplification is going to be taking place. And there's a lot of stuff on this this unit going on. I mean, we we could we got to break this one down because this one isn't exactly like other amps you might have seen in the past. So um, let, let's do the easy stuff first. So there's on and off. There's auto. Well, on auto on in the middle, and you could toggle it down to the bottom for off, right? So uh, one thing this doesn't have is a 12 volt trigger input. So you're gonna be depending on auto on, meaning that as 
uh, signal is fed to this, either via, via your XLR or your RCAs, it will turn on. Um, if you want it on all the time, up, off all the time, down, um, but I think most people will likely run in auto on mode. Um, there's a two pole uh, power plug here um, to get your juice in, and it is 100 to 230 volt capable, so you don't need to worry about your power, whatever you got, just plug it in there and you'll be good to go. Now, let's uh, start, I guess, on the simpler side and move to the uh, little, little more interesting side. So uh, you got variable phase, so this is infinitely variable, and you can spin this thing up to 180 degrees and down to zero. So if you think about a sine wave, you know, you can you can put your phase anywhere on this side of phase up to that 180 degrees. So if you need to time delay this, you know, you're really shifting that sine wave over, right? So you can align it with other sine waves. So as you adjust your phase, you can get everything where it's constructive or deconstructive or uh, aligns better with the sound coming out of your mains. And that's what this phase does, right? It kind of uh, slows things down or speeds it up, meaning it shifts it in time. Uh, enough of dissertation about that though. Um, now let's get to the the filtering, right? So this is crossover, and this switch can be in one of three different positions. Um, you can go into the bottom position, which is no low pass THX mode, and uh, that means that you're really gonna do all of your crossover upstream in your processor or your AVR. You can go to the middle section and use a variable low pass, right? And this goes, it's listed here up to 125 down to 50. Um, and you just uh, twist it around where you want it to be at. This is good if you're gonna integrate this in with music, right? And it's kind of cool because if you had two of these and you wanted to put this into a two channel system, you could use XLR out of your, uh, your preamp, go into your balanced input, right? And then come out, right? And then if you just wanted to use one, you could balance uh, left and right in with those out and peel that off and use the base with one. So this is kind of cool because it's got uh, what I would consider to be kind of higher end capabilities if you want to use this in something other than just a pure home theater environment. Um, pretty, pretty slick. Now, so that's the variable. And then if you flip it to the top, that's fixed low pass 80 hertz. And this is the traditional crossover you see most people using in home theater applications. Now, uh, for us, for me in particular, if I were to permanently uh, integrate this or four of these or two of the 15s and two of the 12s, hint, hint, MK sound, two of the 15 pluses and two of the X12 pluses, just saying, or it could be for the 15s. I mean, I'm not super picky, but if I were going to integrate these into my system permanently, I would go with the uh, the no low pass filter and I would do it all upstream in my uh, in, in my act four. Um, but you've got this and it you know can jump through all kinds of hoops for you. Um, now there are two different EQ settings here and uh, you can go into anechoic MK EQ or THX base EQ. Um, I think if you're going to be tuning these with external devices, you'll just you know stick it in that anechoic MK EQ setting. But if you want that THX base, um, flip it up there. And I think this is something you can play with and you know it's really gonna be personal taste. I think I would likely be down here in anechoic mode uh, myself uh, because I'm going to tune this upstream. Now, we get over into this section. So let's let's talk about here first. So you've got inputs left and right. Now, one thing that I don't like is that these are all colored white and I would prefer to have red and white. Yeah, I know it's nitpicky, but that's me. Um, and so if you just look at the inputs, these two guys, so you got right and left, and then left is also mono. So if you're gonna have one cable coming out of your uh, AVR, Obviously, this is the place you put it. Um, if you happen to have two, then I suppose you could put uh, both there. Some people will probably split and put into both, but uh, this, I think, is, is the way things were intended to be. And then you've got your pass-through output as well for left and right. So if you do need to peel signal off of this and then pass that back through uh, to speakers, particularly in two-channel world, that's what you want to use. Now, up here, this is what equates out to um, a volume control, right? Um, it's called the base level reference control, at least the way it's depicted here. And you can have it be variable, which means this works. And you can make it super loud or turn it down, or you can go into THX fixed. Um, and for me, I would likely have this set variable so I can 
uh, level set the different subs throughout the room so that uh, you know they're they're matched, do some game matching, that kind of thing. Um, but if you want to, you just go into THX Fixed. I mean, the, this is all THX interesting stuff. So you could go THX Fixed with THX Base and no low pass filter in THX mode, and then bam, you, you're running the THX settings. For me, I like control, so I'd keep it in no uh, low pass THX mode, then put it in anechoic MK EQ, and then I would put this in variable, and that way I can kind of control this and get it where I want to level match with the rest of the subs in the room. Now, that is the setup for this, and uh, when I use this, the way that I'm going to set this up is uh, I will have an XLR coming in, and likely will be uh, balanced input right, and I guess I could split it and put it to both of them. I'll play with it and see what happens, but I think probably balanced input right will get me where uh, I need to be. My phase is gonna be set at zero as that I'm gonna tune upstream for this. So I'm not really gonna use this to control phase and then the settings as I discussed before. So that is going to be the Giles McCoy Home Theater Fanatics testing configuration uh, for this particular subwoofer. Now let's uh, pan across this and I'll call out a few more specs, power ratings and that kind of stuff uh, so you can hear those as well. The amplifier provides 600 watts of RMS power and 1,200 watts of peak output power. At 300 watts into 4 ohms, the THD is 0.5%. The subwoofer is 28.7 inches tall, 17.7 .7 inches wide, and 15.2 inches deep. All I can say is that after that deep dive, I'm super excited to see and hear what this subwoofer is gonna be able to do. Now, make sure that you subscribe so that you'll be notified when part two uh, drops. That's gonna be the part with the measurements. And remember, the measurements will be using the Home Theater Fanatics standard subwoofer measurement technique, meaning that you can compare these measurements to subwoofers that I've done in the past and prior videos. So you can kind of see how this thing stacks up against others that we've looked at before, because we, have the subwoofer in the same room, in the same spot, with the same equipment, the same tools, the same everything. I think you get the point. So you can see relatively how it stacks up. And I think it's gonna stack up really, really, really well. So make sure you're subscribed so you'll see when that video drops. And if you have any questions, make sure to like and comment and drop those down below. And if you wanna talk about it, feel free to show up for the every Tuesday live stream. Uh, Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Mountain Time at the end of every episode. I'll take your questions and we can talk about this or whatever you would like so that you can get the information that you need to make your home theater the best that it possibly can be. So with that, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.